Greetings, and welcome to the very first of the Badger Rampant Reads Kipling videos. I will be concentrating on poems that Kipling wrote for a school history book. One or two are quite well known, but mostly they are rather neglected. If you want there to be more poems and don't want to miss them as I post them, then you know what to do. Please like, subscribe and share, share, share. I'm not at the moment intending to cover the really well known poems. There are quite enough versions of If out there on YouTube already. One of the best is by the late and much lamented artist Jonathan Miles Lee. I'll post a link in the description if you really cannot bear not to hear If one more time. Also, at the end, there will be some very brief notes about this poem. So, if you're sitting comfortably, here is Kipling's The Glory of the Garden. Our England is a garden that is full of stately views, of borders, beds and shrubberies and lawns and avenues, with statues on the terraces and peacocks strutting by. But the glory of the garden lies in more than meets the eye. For where the old thick laurels grow along the thin red wall, you'll find the tool and potting sheds which are the heart of all. The cold frames and the hot houses, the dung pits and the tanks, the rollers, carts and drain pipes, and the barrows and the planks. And there you'll see the gardeners, the men and prentice boys, told off to do as they are bid and do it without noise. For, except when seeds are planted and we shout to scare the birds, the glory of the garden, it abideth not in words. And some can pot begonias, and some can bud a rose, and some are hardly fit to trust with anything that grows. But they can roll and trim the lawns, and sift the sand and loam. For the glory of the garden occupieth all who come. Our England is a garden, and such gardens are not made by singing, oh how beautiful, and sitting in the shade, while better men than we go out and start their working lives at grubbing weeds from gravel paths with broken dinner knives. There's not a pair of legs so thin, there's not a head so thick, there's not a hand so weak and white, nor yet a heart so sick, but it can find some needful job that's crying to be done, for the glory of the garden glorifieth every one. Then seek your job with thankfulness and work till further orders, if it's only netting strawberries or killing slugs on borders. And when your back stops aching and your hands begin to harden, you will find yourself a partner in the glory of the garden. Oh, Adam was a gardener. And God, who made him, sees that half a proper gardener's work is done upon his knees. So when your work is finished, you can wash your hands and pray, for the glory of the garden, that it may not pass away. And the glory of the garden, it shall never pass away. Like the other poems I will be recording, this is one of 23 written by Kipling, especially for C.R.L. Fletcher's A School History of England, first published in 1911. It's fair to say that the book itself is pretty reactionary and bombastic, even by the standards of the time. Kipling's poems, like the spirited illustrations, should not be relied upon for historical accuracy. They're not intended as serious history so much as historical ballads. They are there to inspire rather than inform, although, as you will see, they do also teach lessons from history as well. In The Glory of the Garden, Kipling is painting a picture of England itself as a garden, with its people having different jobs, responsibilities and abilities, but all working to make the garden, England, as beautiful, safe and healthy as it can be. He draws on both the Bible and Shakespeare for inspiration, and the poem shows how he is a product of English culture, even as he writes another little piece of that culture. As this is very much what this channel is about, I have decided to make this the first of the poems that I record, even though in the book it is the last. I hope you've enjoyed the poem. Don't forget to like, subscribe 
and share the video. Thank you.